normal, loving family would have told old Joe, it's time to go home. But reports are out they want him to stay. Could it be they need him to stay? Yeah, I think they do on multiple levels. I mean, first, when you're president, of course, you control the machinery of the Department of Justice, which, as we've seen, courtesy of the whistleblowers and others, uh, have done a lot to um, limit uh, the ability um, for prosecution for Hunter Biden. Uh, there have been cover-ups, et cetera. So that's the, the one of the basic reasons. Uh, the other one is media protection. I mean, as long as Joe Biden is the one that the mainstream media sees as the chief opponent to Donald Trump, uh, they're going to avoid covering a lot of Biden's stories. So it also gives them press coverage. And of course, the final one is that, you know, Joe Biden's ability to grant pardons uh, for his son. So I think there are a lot of very specific reasons why this family wants him to stay in the race. Uh, I think it's going to be very hard for him to do so, because once you've lost the media as a Democrat, you're going to have a real problem. Um, but I think the shock uh, is still there, uh, and they're in effect in denial right now. Peter, it was an all, it was an almost unanimous bailout. The the press on the left, the very same people who have been the Biden cheerleaders, who have been on the side of the Biden DOJ protecting this family, for them to make this about face is so shocking. I, I know you've come, you've written books on this. But it just seems there's something else going on underneath the surface for all of them to either have bailed this suddenly or they just see the writing on the wall. I don't know what it is. What is it? What do you think it is? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a very astute observation, Chanel. And, um, you know, look, the bottom line is the, the debate was horribly damaging to Joe Biden and his campaign. I think it was even more damaging to the mainstream media because they've been running for stories for weeks uh, saying that all the videos that people have seen of Joe Biden stumbling verbally or physically were, you know, cheap fakes or deep fakes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and then they have literally turned 180 degrees and said, no, he's not capable. Uh, that's severely damaging to their reputations. I think they do see the writing on the wall that Joe Biden is not going to be able to win in this current state. Uh, the problem is that the alternatives are not so great either. Um, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris polls as badly as Joe Biden uh, does, in some cases even worse than Joe Biden does. Um, so they're really in a quandary. Uh, and the media, again, because of their desire to protect uh, their favored candidates, in this case, Joe Biden, have further damaged their already sullied reputations. Uh, and it's one of the reasons the mainstream media's approval ratings are about down there with Congress, which is, you know, 18 or 19 percent. And this certainly is not going to help. Speaking of those, those fact checkers, you mentioned them briefly just now. It was also very interesting that there were an army of fact checkers that were swooping in while we were watching this debate, defending Biden, saying that Biden did not, in fact, take money from China, as President, former President Trump accused him on stage. President Trump said, you're a Manchurian candidate. And the fact checkers came in in droves, Peter. And it was hilarious. I know, again, you've written books on this. How are they going to, how are they getting away with this dirty wordplay? At the end of the day, it is dirty wordplay. They're playing yeah. with words and details and saying it's nuanced. Joe Biden did not really take money from China. And these fact checkers are just uh, running with that narrative still. Yeah. I mean, what the media is basically saying is, is if I pay money to the spouse or a family member of a politician and then that spouse or family member in turn gives it to the politician himself, I didn't pay that politician. I mean, it's absurd. Uh, and they know it. And, and by the way, you look at some of the cases that are out there right now uh, where political figures are being charged. There's a congressman from the state of Texas, for example, Senator Menendez. It's very similar in this case, where the spouses are the ones that collect the money, the politician benefits, uh, and they are charged in this corrupt enterprise. Um, I would argue what the Bidens have done uh, is really no different. Um, what we know is that they've received tens of millions of dollars from Chinese, Russian, and Ukrainian interests, that the family, the larger Biden family, has lived off of this money for years, uh, and that some of that money ended up in Joe Biden's pocket uh, via his brother. Um, they don't dispute those facts. And what they want to engage in, as I think you so accurately say, is wordplay. Well, 
Joe Biden himself did not actually cash a check from these foreign entities, so it's not technically true. Uh, I think the American people see through this. Uh, the New York Times, uh, Harvard Harris, and other pollsters have asked voters, do you think that Joe Biden engaged in either illegal or corrupt behavior for the commercial benefit of his family? More than 65% of voters in each one of those polls said yes. So again, the media is only sullying their own reputation by clinging to these sort of absurd pandemic, uh, uh, pandemic, um, you know, descriptions of uh, what the Bidens have done here. I saw it firsthand in the briefing room back in the day when we had the COVID madness that everyone was rightfully afraid of COVID, but there was a, a marked pattern from the press corps in that press briefing room. When they were attacking Trump, they were literally using Chinese propaganda talking points. And they're doing, it seems like they're doing that again, because if you just go over to some of the bigger Chinese media outlets, they're you cannot discern them from the so-called fact checkers on CNN. Um, and I wanted your take on that. I mean, you just came out with a book about, about money coming out of China, going one way and killing Americans, Blood Money, a great book. Talk about your, uh, what, have, what have you noticed about China's reaction to Biden's decline and his latest performance? Yeah, I mean, Biden is, I think, clearly the Chinese preferred candidate in this race. Uh, and the reason is, is because he doesn't challenge them on anything. Uh, and the point of blood money is really to point out these are not victimless crimes. Uh, there are Americans, millions of Americans that have died because of policies that China has carried out. We all know, of course, about COVID. Uh, we we uh, know about fentanyl. As I point out in the book, this is a Chinese operation. The drug cartels are the junior partners. Uh, you can look at the violence in our streets. Uh, China in 2018 started smuggling into the country uh, these small devices called Glock switches that you put to a Glock handgun, makes it a fully automatic machine gun. That's resulted in deaths in the United States. China's doing all of this, and Joe Biden will not call them out. And I think the reason he won't call them out is because he's compromised. His family's taken tens of millions of dollars from Chinese businessmen linked to the Chinese government and linked to the Chinese intelligence apparatus. Um, and the Bidens have done nothing discernible in return for this. Um, and I think that's because the services, in effect, that are being performed are being done by Joe Biden. And the mistake that's often made, Chanel, is people want to think that it's a quid pro quo, that they got paid this amount of money for this decision. That's not how China works. It's more of a retainer arrangement. We're going to provide you with funds, um, and we are going to hope that there's favorable treatment in return. And Joe Biden has absolutely given them favorable uh, treatment on a number of levels. Part of it is looking the other way when they've engaged in these actions that are killing the Americans. It's a form of what they call disintegration warfare against the United States. And this administration is doing nothing to combat it. Not only nothing, Peter, I mean, again, you've done incredible work in this field. You were bar none. Very little people, little can actually compete with the stuff that you put out because you, you bring the receipts. You bring the, the documentation, the financial records, because at the end of the day, so much of this can be explained by the money trail. And what's sad and very scary to me, and I've, I've been working on a, a few investigations on this, is how that money trail leaks into our core departments like the Department of Justice, where you have high-level government officials in the Department of Justice, for example, who know and understand that families like the Bidens will pay them handsomely if the DOJ can perhaps share information that shouldn't be leaked at all. Uh, that, that part is, I think, the, untest the unexposed story about all of this, too, because the nature of corruption, it will always, I think, be the same. Whenever there's man and power in any given space, corruption will exist. So my question to you is, having done so much study on this, having done so much work into this, has the Biden family and the way they've operated changed the way that other corruption agents will act in the future? Is this a warning signal to them, or is it, is it always going to be this way? 
Now, I think you bring up a hugely important point here, Chanel, and that is that ultimately this is not about the Bidens. Uh, this is about the entire political class in, in Washington, D.C. What do I mean by that? Well, the Bidens have changed corruption dramatically in a very negative way. First, the sources of corruption. We're used to seeing, you know, domestic people in the United States bribing or paying off a, a, a politician, and that's bad and corrupt and needs to be dealt with. The Bidens actually have taken large sums of money from our chief rivals, you would even say, I would even say, our enemies on the global stage, and the amounts of money. We're not talking about a half a million dollar payoff. We're talking about tens of millions of dollars that have gone through these Biden LLCs. And the question is, if the Bidens are allowed to do this without any penalty, uh, which they certainly have not had much penalty other than a congressional investigation, you open the door to other people imitating them. Uh, in other words, if the Bidens can do it, why can't we do it? Uh, so we're looking at a situation where in the next administration or the administration after that, whoever is president, why can't a secretary of state or a secretary of defense or a vice president or a president say, my adult children can be on the payroll of entities in China, do nothing in return. It's a influence operation, but that's okay because the Bidens were able to do it. Why can't I? If there's one thing we know about corruption, Chanel, it's it will be imitated. If it's not dealt with and it's not dealt with firmly, it will be imitated in Washington, D.C., because you so artfully said earlier, as long as you have human beings and power, People are going to look for opportunities to self-enrich. And this Biden precedent is a horrible one for our country. And I think it needs to be dealt with not just because he's the president of the United States right now, but it sets a standard for future leaders, which is absolutely terrible for the future of our country. So well put. Peter Schweitzer, his latest book is Blood Money, a chilling must read. Peter, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me, Chanel. I appreciate it.